Greenhouse gas emissions, global climate change. We are all facing the same challenges and need to work together to develop solutions. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, comes from many sources. The decay of plant and animal matter, fires and volcanoes, even our breathing emits CO2. The way we live has a cumulative impact on our environment. Every time we drive our cars, or heat our homes, or turn on the lights, most of us are using energy that comes from fossil fuels. Burning fossil fuels creates emissions, including CO2. Industrialization and rising population levels around the world have increased the demand for energy, and meeting that demand increases the emissions being released into the atmosphere. CO2 is one of the many greenhouse gases being emitted into the air from both natural sources and human activity. So what can Alberta do to meet our growing energy needs? Solar, wind, and other renewable sources will play a more important role in Alberta's energy future, but they cannot currently replace oil and gas. So we must develop our fossil fuels in a cleaner, more environmentally responsible way. That's what carbon capture and storage will allow us to do. The government of Alberta has taken a lead role in committing to reduce emissions using carbon capture and storage. This technology, also known as CCS, is outlined in the 2008 Climate Change Strategy as the most effective way to help Alberta meet its emission reduction goals. The Government of Alberta is investing $2 billion to help develop three to five large-scale projects which will capture, transport and store the CO2. CCS is a tested and proven technology. Its ability to reduce carbon dioxide emissions is recognized around the world by groups such as the International Energy Agency and the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. CO2 collected during the carbon capture and storage process can be pumped into an oil reservoir to help increase production. It can also be pumped kilometers deep below the Earth's surface where it will be permanently sealed. Let's take a closer look at how this is done. Many industries, including coal-fired electricity plants, cement plants, oil sands upgraders, and oil refineries, use fossil fuels to run their facilities. This creates CO2 emissions. The first step in CCS is filtering the carbon dioxide from other emissions. Next, the carbon dioxide is compressed for transport. It can either be sent to its destination through a pipeline or put into a tanker and trucked. Captured carbon has been safely transported via trucks in Alberta for more than two decades, primarily for enhanced oil recovery. In fact, you've probably already passed a tanker containing CO2 on the highway. There are also a few smaller enhanced oil recovery projects in Alberta using a pipeline. One of the world's largest CCS project pipes carbon from a plant in North Dakota to Weyburn, Saskatchewan. Since 2007, approximately 10 million tons of carbon dioxide has safely traveled more than 300 kilometers and given new life to a depleting oil field. Enhanced oil recovery has tremendous potential to help increase production from Alberta's existing oil fields. When carbon dioxide is used in enhanced oil recovery, it's injected into an oil formation to help the oil flow more freely. That means less hard-to-reach oil is left in the ground. It also means energy revenues and jobs for Albertans. Research shows that billions of barrels of conventional oil may be recoverable using enhanced oil recovery in Alberta. There may also be opportunity for enhanced natural gas recovery. CO2 not used in enhanced oil recovery can be injected into very deep geological reservoirs for permanent storage. The Western Canadian Sedimentary Basin is the geological feature that has held the energy reserves for eons. Once the oil or gas is extracted, the depleted reservoir becomes an ideal place to safely store carbon dioxide. The CO2 is sealed in the depleted reservoir by the rock structure, and the well used to inject the carbon is then sealed with concrete to prevent leakage. The well is then monitored. Carbon capture and storage is being successfully used around the world. In Canada, it has mostly been used for enhanced oil recovery. In Algeria and Norway, CCS is being used for long-term storage of carbon dioxide. In Norway, 
Offshore natural gas contains a high level of carbon dioxide, which needs to be removed before the gas is shipped. The CO2 has been stored and sealed one kilometer below the ocean floor since 1996. In Algeria, 1.2 million tons of carbon dioxide has been captured and stored annually since 2004. Two billion dollars, announced by the government of Alberta in 2008, will help produce CCS projects that will be up and running by 2015. This is an investment in environmental protection and part of Alberta's contribution to the global climate change challenge. The projects are expected to reduce emissions by 5 million tons each year starting in 2015. That's the same as taking 1 million vehicles or about one-third of Alberta's cars and trucks off of the roads. This funding will help establish Alberta as a global leader in CCS technology. That expertise can then be shared with the world. Alberta's already a leader in energy development. This investment in the science of solutions will help make Alberta a leader in CCS technology as well. CCS could be used in coal-fired electricity plants, oil refineries, and other large emitters of carbon dioxide. These projects will help Alberta improve CCS technology and reduce costs. CCS will ensure Alberta's economy remains strong while doing what's best for the environment. CCS is not a silver bullet solution to climate change, but it is a technology that will significantly reduce emissions while scientists develop new energy innovations for the future. The benefits of CCS will be felt over time as our environmental footprint is reduced. It's a major and important step that we will take now to help preserve our world for future generations. Here's how to find out more about CCS.